Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Academic Coordinates. In this video, I'm introducing you guys to hyperbolic functions. You know, um, y is equals to 1 divided by x, you know, is the mother graph of a hyperbolic function, right? And so in this video, we're going to look at different maneuvers that are done to a hyperbolic function and the effect that those maneuvers have on the, on the equation of the function, you know? And for the sake of this video, we're going to limit ourselves, you know, to the vertical shift of the graph, right? f of x is equals to a divided by x plus q is the equation that we're going to use. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. First of all, let us appreciate a. a is the vertical stretch. It's the vertical stretch of the graph. And let us appreciate, right, when a is positive, you know what I'm saying? The wings of the hyperbola will be on the first quadrant and on the, um, you know, third quadrant, right? This is y, this is x, right? And when a is less than zero, or in other words, negative, the wings of the hyperbola will be where? You know, I'm sure at home you are screaming it right now. It's going to be on the second quadrant um, and the fourth quadrant. And before we can go any further, okay, A is the vertical, vertical stretch, you know, it also stresses the, the closeness, you know, of the graph, you know, to the axis, right? Um, I want us to appreciate something about hyperbolic graph, guys, that they are symmetrical. These, these two wings are symmetrical about this line and this line, you know, the axis of symmetry. And these lines have equations have an equation y is equal to mx plus c, all right? So the equation of this line, um, I mean the gradient of this line is m is equals to 1. So the gradient of this line is um, um, 1. And as you have done um, linear functions, this line um, passes or, or cuts the y axis at 0. So its equation will be y is equals to x and this one y is equals to minus x. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. And same applies here. The gradient of this line is 1, and the gradient of this line um, is negative 1. You know what I'm saying? However, it's not always the case that this will be the equation of the of the line, that the x, I mean, I mean the c, you know, um, of this will always be 0. You know, the, the graph can be shifted upwards and um, 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 horizontally, you know, but do not have a horizontal shift for now. Let's focus on vertical. The graph can be shifted vertically such that where this line um, 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 crosses or cuts the y-axis might not necessarily be zero. So just be careful about that. Speaking about shiftings, you know, let me introduce you guys to Q. Q, this guy here, Q. Q is responsible for the vertical shift of the hyperbolic graph hyperbolic um, graph or function right such that if q is positive you know this will result into an upward shift you know and then if q is negative this will result into a downward shift you know what i'm saying okay you know okay cool and then um, hyperbolic um, graph, as I've stated, are symmetrical, you know, they are symmetrical here and here. And also, I think we can appreciate that um, the angle here, right, it's 45 degrees and the angle here, it's 45 degrees, you know, and these graphs um, intersect, I mean, these two lines intersect, you know, um, at this point, right? So you might be asked, for example, to find, you know, the equations of the S of symmetries, right? Um, um, so basically, basically, you know that the gradient will be one for one and the other one, the gradient will be a negative one. So you will need a point, just one point in order for you to be able to, to determine the equation. Okay. 
Besides you uh, being responsible only for the vertical shift, there is something so much special that Q, you know, represents, right? Um, Q is going to be a line, Y is equal to Q. So it's going to be a horizontal, horizontal asymptote. And you might be sitting there at home and be like, what in the world, you know, is a horizontal asymptote? Or what is an asymptote actually, you know? So we have a line like, um, let's say here, y is equals to q. And our function maybe is like something like this and something like this, you know? But it never touches this line, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because of we have limited ourselves to um, um, vertical shifts, you know what I'm saying? So this graph is shifted, you know, Q units upwards. So an asymptote is an imaginary line that a function approaches but never touches, right? So Q is the horizontal asymptote. You know what I'm saying? So um, let's say we've got a, a function Y is equals to A divided by X plus Q, you know? Depending on what the value of A is, you know? If the value of A is positive, the wings of the hyperbola will be here and here. If it is negative, the wings will be here or here. You know what I'm saying? And Q is responsible. If Q is, let's say, is positive, the graph will go like 1, 2, 3, 4, up until Q times. If it is negative, the graph will go down. You know what I'm saying? So basically, that's the introduction of hyperbolic functions. And on the next video, we're going to do an actual example and we're going to interpret, you know, hyperbolic functions you know we're going to find the domain of the function the range of the function the values of the function increases the values of x where the function decreases and stuff like that so yes guys this is this was just a brief introduction of hyperbolic functions and um i cannot wait to, you know to do examples with you guys and you'll get to appreciate you know these functions as a whole do stay blessed and enjoy the rest of your day